It's time to harvest those tomatoes from your garden and make some fresh salsa, but you could run into a few problems. We have Rita Usatis with us with the NDSU Extension Office. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me back again. So we're going to make some salsa, but we have some issues too. I mean, the, it's been a rough season for gardeners, so you might not have that many tomatoes coming out of the garden. That's correct. You know, I was lucky that I work with a horticulturalist and he had this wonderful produce basket and all kinds of tomatoes for me. And so that wasn't a problem for me today. And actually my parents have a whole bunch of tomatoes as well so tomatoes seem to be producing um, but the problem is is the canning lids I thought I heard that early in the pandemic that's still a thing there's it's, a shortage there's still a shortage you, you they're out there but you got to be in the right place at the right time in order to get these lids because um, they kind of come in and go out um, however you can buy a lot of jars with lids on but a lot of people already have jars so, yes exactly. and so it's I have a commodity here hot commodity those lids are a hot commodity <laughs> so we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a minute but you know, if we have all those tomatoes, those peppers and onions, we're gonna make a fresh salsa. Mm. And what's better than a fresh salsa? I, I can't think of anything. So Lisa, I'm gonna have you start cutting the okay. pepper and tomatoes if you want, and okay. I'll just go ahead and, yeah. and talk about it. So in our, in our fresh salsa, we're gonna use a Roma tomato. Okay. And a Roma tomato is a paste tomato. So it makes that thicker salsa. If you don't have Roma tomatoes, that is just fine. It is, um, your, your salsa will just be more, uh, liquidy or watery and so if you don't mind a runny or salsa any tomato will work if you want to do a, if you have a combination of both that's just fine so in my um, bowl we're going to have um, four three to four Roma tomatoes I actually have a tomato cutting knife. okay it works like, much go. better oh my goodness yes. look at how that nice. slices nice. so well and so we have three to four Roma tomatoes and into our tom that we're going to add um, one to two cloves of garlic that are finely chopped. Well, I'm cheating, and I always do. I buy the pre-cut uh, garlic, oh. um, and you only need a half a teaspoon in place of spending all this time mincing your garlic. So I highly recommend doing the We all like to save time. The easy version with our garlic. And into that, again, we're gonna add some jalapeno peppers and some green peppers. Um, and if you want it hotter, Add more jalapeno peppers. If you want it really hot, try a habanero or a ghost pepper, but be really careful with that. With our jalapeno peppers or any of our hot peppers, you're gonna wanna wear plastic gloves. Okay. And you don't wanna touch your face Good or reminder. eyes with that. So there. with, with your, any of those hot peppers, cause they will really burn. And then we have um, a third of a large onion. So what's a large onion? A large onion is about the size of a baseball. Okay. So about a third of a large onion. And our office smelled like salsa all day yesterday and everyone wanted to eat it, but I wouldn't let them. It smells so good in the studio right now. I wish people it was um, We're gonna put some cilantro in it. So you, it's just one small bunch and you're gonna finally chop that as well and, and put in our product. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and take this, these products here. I'm just gonna use my hands today. So. I didn't, I, they're kind of big chunks, but. But you know what, it, will, it still all tastes the same. Okay. And we're going to just stir that up and to keep it nice and colorful and fresh looking. Um, my salsa I made yesterday, we take a fourth of a lemon and we just squeeze the lemon juice on it and it keeps it nice and fresh and the color is good and, and it'll last yeah, a couple really, of days. Yeah, really, if you look at this, this doesn't look like, you know, because sometimes, you know, like some fruits and things will color so, a little brown. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and why don't we just move that tray in front there mm -hmm. and we have our fresh salsa all made. And, you know, serve it with chips. You can serve it with whatever you want. It's actually really low in calories, high in nutrition. Um, this is a fresh salsa. So what I mean by that is that you can't, so you can't put it in a jar and process it, and you don't want to freeze it. Okay. So you want to eat one, this one just fresh as it is. Um, and again, it lasts for a couple days. And I will give you a taste when you're ready for that. Okay. Um, for that, so isn't that just an easy Super salsa? easy, and we will be putting that uh, recipe up on yeah, our, I, our, it was up on the screen, we'll yep. put it on our North Dakota Today Facebook page as yep. well, so we can make sure to get that. So what are the tips then, what's the difference in when you're going to can it? So if we're gonna use a canned salsa, what we wanna make sure we do is use a research test it recipe, and they're available from any extension offices or universities, or like a ball blue book. And so those have been um, tested to make sure we have the right pH or the right acidity in them so we can safely preserve them without making sure we don't make anyone sick. Okay. So you want to make sure you use a tested recipe for that. This one's not, obviously. Um, and so this one is an easy, this one 
PWs as well. It's on our website. And then you need to process them, like in a boiling water bath for an approximate amount of time. And it varies on what type of salsa and the ingredients you have in it. Well, since there's a lid shortage, <laughs> people are trying all kinds of options. They're going to try to reuse old pickle jars or, or pasta jars because, you know, they have a, a rubber ring in them. Well, these are not meant to be reused. And so you're not, we're totally, totally do not recommend it. Don't use no, them for that. Use right. them for storage. Okay. You know, use them in the garage for nails and, and stuff like that. So don't use them. What you want to use is a jar with a two-piece lid. And each, every year you want to buy a new lid. And they don't last that long in your cupboard. So if you find cleaning out your grandma's house and you find some from 20 years ago, they may not work anymore. Um, so make sure you use a new lid. And then follow the manufacturer's instructions because they've changed. We used to boil our lids. Mm -hmm. And now you just wash them with hot soapy water. Oh, okay. And then you put them on and put the band on and then you process according to whatever the recipe you'll be making. Well, since there's a lid shorties, what else can you do? You can freeze. Well, with the same thing with freezing containers, you don't want to use the standard like whip topping container or right. the margarine container because they're not meant for freezing. So there's actually freezer containers out there, a heavier container with a night nice seal. There's a place for you to label and date them. So make sure you're using their standard freezing container or you can use uh, Ziploc bags. And there's a different in Ziploc bags as well, too. There's a freezer bag. It's a little heavier and sturdier. And then there's just a regular plastic bag. So why, why you want to do this is to make sure they last a lot of time. In you don't your want it to go bad. We've spent a lot of time making this salsa. So, all right. Well, we're out of time. We're going to put some more advice up on our North Dakota Today Facebook Thank you. page. And, and really, I'm just going to wrap you because I want to try that salsa. Okay. That set aside for Thank me as well. Thank you again for having me. <laughs> Thank you, Rita. It's always great advice. We'll be right back here on North Dakota Today uh, talking about planning your dream wedding.